Well, it makes sense to use Spider- almost like Marvel Suicide Squad, to use Spider-Man since his identity's already outed, as being like, now we're gonna put you on this team with all these villains and you have to deal with it because General Thunderbolt Ross wants, and it's actually be the Thunderbolts, mm-hmm. um, except with Spider-Man. Right. So that, that, could be inter- that could be an interesting take on things. Uh, and then also, everyone wants to see the last Spider-Man movie, at least MCU, be the one, is it one last day or one final day? You would know. One yeah. more day. One, one more day. day. Mm-hmm. Everyone wants to see that be the storyline for the next Spider-Man movie, because then he can go off and do his own thing. Do you guys know One More Day? Yeah. Johnny, give him a rundown of what that comic storyline is. Uh, so One More Day, uh, pretty much sadly enough, it was the end of John uh, Straczynski's run on Spider-Man. So pretty much what ended up happening is that in order to save Aunt May's life, he had to give up his love to Mary Jane. And then so in the comics, they were married for years, and then they became separated. And so at the end of like One More Day, Peter Parker's a bachelor again. Mm-hmm. Him and Mary Jane are still friends, but they're no longer married. So it was kind of a way for the Marvel Universe to kind of retcon Spider-Man and take him back to that 70s, 80s classic because at the time, Joe Quesada, the editor-in-chief, like a Spider-Man who was single, dating, hanging out with Harry Osborn or whatnot. So that was kind of like a reset um, that they did for one more day. Hey, real quick question to you guys. Show of hands, do you think that the MCU can survive without Spider-Man? Yeah. yeah. All right. Can Spider-Man, can Spider-Man survive, survive without the MCU? Without the MCU? No, no. <laughs> There's still like five hands, was it? There was like less hands for the later question. I was like, I y'all will still go see it, but you'll complain every time, right? <laughs> That's what's going to happen. to reprise his role, they want to try to save Daredevil's character. It's a possibility, but, but I think the bigger story out of that actually is that they really want the Kingpin back. Because yeah. they really like what Vincent, because Vincent D'Onofrio is an actor that can transcend, yeah, he can transcend television and film, so getting him back is probably more important than actually getting Daredevil back. And to piggyback off that, going back to the comics, the Spider-Man's identity was revealed during Civil War. The way they kind of retconned that was actually through Doctor Strange. Right. So it's potential that Doctor Strange could pop up at the end of the next Spider-Man movie, which I hope is called Spider-Man Prom Night. I'm sure for that one. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but potentially, again, yeah, Doctor Strange should make a cameo here as well. Alright, now... Wait, well, um, he had a question. Yeah. Ah, yeah. okay. is he still at Universal? Still, He's coming to Black I Panther still too. Think, exactly, because oh, yeah. in Endgame, do you guys remember in Endgame when, um, yes, she talks about the tremors under the sea. Yeah, that's Submariner, that's Navy. I think there was a, I heard a, I heard something that the next Black Panther, Black Panther 2, the villain is going to be Namor, and it's going to be like, God, it was, it was called like Fallen Kingdom or something. Basically, something like that. There's a storyline that, that they're basing on this. But there's a storyline they're basing it on where, where this is going and that he's supposed to be the next villain. Uh, wow. for, for Black Panther. But then they'll end up friends. Yes. <laughs> Namor's kind of a dick. Yeah, dude, Namor's kind of a jerk, so. <laughs> but you have those friends who are kind of dicks, but you still hang around but with them. But the cool thing with, with introducing <laughs> Namor, though, is, is, is that you can then like really dive into some Fantastic Four stuff, which I'm sure you can get excited yes. about. Oh, yeah, sure. But the they looked at the deal with Hino Ghost, but Hino Ghost said they were going to be moving on. Well, here's the thing. So Universal also has the rights to the Hulk, but yeah, the thing is, yeah. the thing is, the Hulk can't appear in his own movie oh, no. without Universal, but he can appear in other people's movies. Right. Same thing with Namor. Which is why they had him hanging out with the Ragnarok. Right. That's why. Can't have a Namor movie, but they can have Namor. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Like shared custody. Yeah. Yeah. Shared custody. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. You can always spend time on the weekends. Yeah, yeah. Oh, next you spend, week. yeah. You can spend Marvel time on your weekends. Okay. Um. The last one of the ten net that was announced is the one. The hippest. The big popular one that I was excited about is also Thor: Love and Thunder. Once again, to be directed by Taika Waititi. Um, and also introducing the concept of Jane Foster as Thor. So, uh, which was originated from the Jason Aaron brother. But just know Valkyrie is going to be there too. Valkyrie is going to be searching for love. Yeah. Yeah. Peter's not the girlfriend. She's going to be on Tinder. Swipe it up. Unless Jane is the girlfriend, and then it's like, have you guys seen Legend of Hora? Yeah. <laughs> Where Mako's ex girlfriends hook up with each other? That's what I want. That's what I want. Go over and be like, oh, okay. What's up? 